How you doing guys? Welcome to another higher level video. This is volume 4, topic 20, higher level organic synthetic roots and we strictly look at reaction pathways. Let's do it. Okay, topic 20, volume 4, synthetic roots, looking at reaction pathways. The IB understandings and applications and skills focus around developing a product from a starting material via a series of steps. The multi-step process will only be up to four steps maximum. So if you can't do it in four steps, you won't be assessed on it. Now we can use the reaction pathway below to design a synthesis for an organic product. I'm not going to go through it all there. You can take a photo of that image if you need to. Um, the M's represent where you need to know the mechanism. So not only could you be asked to convert from one to the other, you could be asked to draw the mechanism for that process. Refer to this when you're practicing questions, but you're not given it on the exam, so you need to make sure that you do know it. One good thing to do with this type of diagram is to go through and also write what kind of reactions occur when you go from say an alkene to an alcohol. You know, that's electrophilic addition. Or if you go from an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, then that's oxidation. Make sure you can reference those types of reactions because they'll also ask you to do those as well. So let's just get straight into it and practice some questions. So let's design a pathway for the formation of the compound 2-propylethanoate using alkenes as the only starting material. An ester 2-propylethanoate is made from an alcohol and an acid. So before we can actually make that product, we've got to work out what our, what our two things are that we need to react to actually form that product. So the first part of the name comes from the alcohol, so we need 2-propanol. The last part of the name comes from the acid, so we need ethanoic acid. So they're the two things that we need to make from our alkenes and then make our ester. So let's have a look at 2-propanol first. So if we wanted to make 2-propanol, we could start off with propene. That would be the alkene that we need to make that alcohol. So I start off with propane, and I've written it here in semi-structural formula. Now, how can I turn an ene into an alcohol? Well, I can react that with water, phosphoric acid catalyst, and 300 degrees, which would give me my secondary alcohol. Now, I need to be a little bit careful when I do this reaction. This is an electrophilic addition reaction, so it takes into consideration Markovnikov's rule. And that rule is that the hydrogen would go to the carbon with the most hydrogens already. That would be the major product. So in this case, the major product is actually 2-propanol, and we wouldn't get much of the 1-propanol. So that makes this reaction just a little bit easier. So make sure that you always consider Markovnikov's rule when you do these different reactions. So 2-propanol is the major product and that's a simple one-step reaction where we would produce a fair bit of 2-propanol. With the ethanoic acid, well we can't start off with propane to make ethanoic acid but we can start off with ethene. So we start with ethene and then we can convert that to the acid. So the first thing I'd like to do is convert that to an alcohol. I don't have to take into consideration Markovnikov's rule for this one because that is a symmetrical alkene, which would give me ethanol as my product. Once I've got my alcohol, then I can start to oxidize the alcohol using the dichro acidified dichromate, and I warm it up to produce the aldehyde, ethanol. Once I've got my aldehyde, well then I can undergo the same reaction, oxidation, under reflux conditions, very important that you mention reflux, to form my acid, which would be ethanoic acid. So there I've got my two products that I need to make 2-propyl ethanoate. Now how do I make an ester? Well I take my alcohol and my acid and then I add those together with concentrated sulfuric acid as the catalyst and that will form my ester. 
Now what I've done here is just a little bit of revision for organic chemistry. I've drawn it out to try and show you what the reaction would look like. Here we have our alcohol on the left um, and then we have our acid on the right. I've got a feeling I'm missing a, a CH3 group there. Um, but what will happen is the OH of the acid will react with the H of the alcohol and what we will get is a condensation reaction to produce our ester, which in this case would be 2-propyl ethanoate. I've actually written it here correctly in semi-structure. I'm just missing a, a methyl group in that left-hand side. Plus water because it's a condensation reaction. Then, the second question they might ask you is to identify the types of reactions that have happened in that series. So from ethene to the alcohol, that's an electrophilic addition reaction. Then, changing from the alcohol to the acids, that's an oxidation process. And then to create our ester, that was a condensation reaction. Okay, the second example, design a reaction pathway using balanced chemical equations, so this is slightly different, for the conversion of propene to propanoic acid. So the words balanced chemical react equations means I need to account for all of the reactants and the products and balance those up. Now, the problem here is I can't convert via the water slash phosphoric acid catalyst reaction here because my major product will not actually be one propanol. So I need to find another reaction pathway that allows me to do this without using that pathway because Markovnikov's rule would produce a minor product and I don't want a minor product. So I'm going to start off with my propane and then I'm going to have to add hydrogen to it and hydrogenate that particular double bond. So I use a nickel catalyst to form this saturated alkane propane, pro, propane. Sorry, I nearly forgot there. No byproducts for that one. The second step I'll need to do is I need to halogenate that alkane. I need to add on a reactive chlorine group. So I'm going to react this with chlorine gas under UV light, and that's going to form a mono-substituted halogenoalkane, which would be a chloroalkane. My byproduct here would be HCl. Now I've got my chlorine on the chain, I can do a little bit more chemistry. I can now react that with the hydroxide ion to form an alcohol. So I'll react that with NaOH, for example, aqueous, and that will form our al alcohol, which will be propen-1-ol. So I've got the ol in the right spot now. If I used the other reaction, I wouldn't have had a primary alcohol. My byproduct would be NaCl. Now I've got my alcohol, I can undergo our oxidation reaction to form our acid. So we have our propen-1-ol plus oxygen. This is how we would balance for this reaction, saying that we're adding in oxygen. We have our oxidizing agent Cr2O72- H plus acidified dichromate, and we would need to reflux that to form our carboxylic acid, which would be propanoic acid. If you did try and convert this using water, I think you would receive some marks, but it's not the correct process. You do need to take into account which is the major product for the synthesis. So be a little bit careful on that and just think a little bit more deeply about the reaction pathway that you're doing. With reaction number three, the hydroxide substitution, that would be an SN2 reaction and you need to know the mechanism for that, so make sure that you're aware. And in reaction two, with the chlorine, that is free radical substitution. And again, you need to know the mechanism for that reaction as well. Additional questions that you could do for practice for those type of questions. Okay, the last one. Starting with 2-methylpropane, deduce a synthetic pathway to make 2-methylpropanoic acid. For each step, specify the reagents and necessary conditions and write an equation for each step. So similar to the last one. So 2-methylpropane, and I need to turn that into 2-methylpropanoic acid. So 2-methylpropane has the methyl group on the second carbon, and then we have a hydrocarbon around that. 
and I need to turn it into methyl propanoic acid. So I need to get an acid functional group on the chain. Now this is going to be a very similar reaction to the last one. Um, I need to make sure I get the chlorine on the chain first. Once I get the chlorine on the chain, then I can start to do a little bit more chemistry with this molecule. At the moment, 2-methylpropane, it's a saturated hydrocarbon. It's not going to be very reactive. So the first step is to take my 2-methylpropane and react that with chlorine gas with Cl2 under UV light. When I react that under UV light, I can form a number of different substitutions, but the one that I want would be the one with one chlorine on the chain in the primary position, so it would be a primary halogenoalkane. I could separate those via distillation if I needed to, which would be another question they might ask. But here I've got my mono-substituted chloroalkane. Once I've got my chloroalkane, then I can convert it to an alcohol using NaOH. Again, this would be a SN2 reaction because it is a primary halogenoalkane and that would form a primary alcohol. Once I've got my primary alcohol, and I think I might have missed an NaCl there, but you can put it in. Once I've got my primary alcohol, then I can convert it into the aldehyde first using the acidified potassium dichromate plus my oxygen to represent that I need to balance for oxygen in this reaction but I add in my oxidizing agent acidified dichromate and I warm that to form the aldehyde which in this case would be CH3, CH and then our branch CH3, CHO. Make sure you write the aldehyde functional group as CHO. Once I've got my aldehyde functional group I do the same reaction under reflux conditions to form my acid. So again, balancing for the oxygen by adding the square brackets for O, adding my oxidizing agent of acidified potassium dichromate, and then stating that it needs to undergo reflux would give me my product being 2-methylpropanoic acid. Okay, volume four, some top tips. The pathways and reactions. Your teacher can't simply do every reaction for you. You just need to remember some of them. And then if you're ever stuck with the conditions and it says to put the conditions, just put heat. Put something down if you're a little bit unsure of the conditions. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.